Well, I would say that being a researcher was not my childhood dream. But uh, you know, as everything follows a set of rules of evolution, even even your your goal goes through a series of evolution. For example, I, if I would say when I was in my late high school, for example, plus two classes, I always wanted to become a software engineer. Now, why I wanted to become a software engineer? Because there was social influence that software engineers are highly paid. So I didn't know anything about research. I just knew that if I opt this career, I'll be highly paid and the life will be so smooth and easy going. Now, when I after after my plus two, I was so fascinated about few scientific concepts and true sci-fi movies and reading some sci-fi novels influenced my mind. But I would not say it influenced to, to that level that I become a researcher. But yes, it gave me some kind of curiosity to understand the nature and natural phenomena. So for that, I didn't go for engineering, though I was eligible to, but I went for pure sciences. I opted for pure sciences. So after paying five years, that was my thought basically. After, if I pay five years to my scientific study, it will be pretty senseless and also non-advisable to go into some field which which is non-scientific and where you can earn something. So tell me of course the more you already know, the more experience you have, the better. On the other hand, as mentioned before, you cannot know everything. And it's impossible to know everything. You always have to be aware that you don't know everything and you cannot possibly know everything. But, um, so in general, yes, the more experience you have, the more details you know, the more problems you are actually able to solve, the more independent you can work, uh, the better. But this is not the answer to everything. So, in the end, you will never solve all the problems just by yourself. You will work together with people, which is possibly one of the most important skills. So, in general, if you like what you're doing, and uh, you have the motivation and the energy to do it, um, this is probably the much more important thing that is behind the start of the scientific career on the research field than the knowledge of every single technique and mastering all the necessary skills, because that's what you will do on the way anyways. You know, I started in a very experimentalist, uh, very much in experimentalist field. So I did my bachelor thesis in um, FTIR spectroscopy, and actually I wanted to get uh, into uh, this new field of terahertz spectroscopy, and that's also a reason why I started, why I picked that special master program I, I was talking about. Um, and during my master program, I actually, I've always wanted to uh, get into that uh, direction, to get into that field. Um, but at some point, my uh, perception, if you want to uh, say it like that, changed, because at some point, I just noticed that no, that's not the thing you want to do, I, um, because so my master program is very much spe specialized already. So as as I told you, uh, very much focused on spectroscopic techniques and theoretical concepts and uh, simulations. And at some point, I just realized that. Um, so I learned a lot of new stuff, and uh, all the uh, theoretical stuff was very appealing to me and yeah, at that point my own perception uh, changed in the way that um, I realized that I don't want to do this uh, spectrosco spectroscopy work uh, uh, anymore, so actually I must make me a theorist, you could say that. If the aim is to, to, to become a researcher, you should, you should develop a very strong background in your discipline. 
especially in, in, in this field that I work, you should, you, should, you, should have, you should have very good skills for programming, you should have very strong background, uh, scientific background itself, either physics or biology or in chemistry, and you should since uh, very early in your career to participate in the, in the lab activities and, and the research activities that support whatever, whatever is possible. You should pay attention to have a good record of publications in good journals and with good topics. And what else do you need? Yeah, that I would say that would be the, 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 main, the main steps to go to the, to the mainstream research. Again, I think my, general, my answer is a little bit more general, not specific to this field. Um, you should find something that you really like doing, that you're convinced is worth doing and worth your time. So, in general, if you do something that you really enjoy, that you stand behind, basically, what you really think is what you want to do with your life, and your scientific life in particular, um, you are you can spend a lot more energy on this. You are much, much more convincing to others and to yourself. And you can, your energy is so much more than if you work on something that you just think is going to be successful, but it's not something that you actually enjoy, that you're completely convinced of yourself. Um, that would be my main hint to people who want to start a scientific career. Chances are not very good in general. Um, it's a very competitive field. Uh, science in general, so um, the more you like what you're doing, I would say, the more are the chances that you will succeed. If you really want to understand how theoretical chemistry works, um, I think the most important thing is numerical methods. So let me give you one specific or good example. If you do integration on a paper, you have, let's say, it's a continuous uh, process and it's totally different from integration uh, um, which you do numerically because this is, you have a discretized integration of your, um, of your problem and those are two totally different things. So that's basic thing um, one has to understand if uh, one wants to um, work in the field of theoretical, theoretical chemistry. So that's numerical methods and how they differ from mathematics uh, on paper. So the paper or pencil approach. The only suggestion I would like to give to physics minimum students is try to learn as many things as they can, try to learn interdisciplinary subjects, try to master the soft skills as well as academic skills which is required for their research career and also for non-academic career. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the people. <laughs> so it was funny because I was like, 